In this video, I want to talk about G3 splines and relations, and also a little bit about splines and uh, constraining them in general in SolidWorks. This is going to appeal to industrial designers or anyone doing product design uh, inside SolidWorks that wants to maintain really good surface quality. So I've got here uh, just a little sample file with some different uh, curves in it, and we have the curvature combs showing already on them. And I just want to kind of do a quick refresher on continuity of curves. So if I draw a spline between these two points, uh, the most basic form of continuity I could set between them would be tangency. And I can right click or click on the spline and show its curvature combs. So we can see that tangency basically means that the slope of the curve is equal there where it meets the other curve. Uh, but the radius of curvature is not necessarily the same. So we see this big jump in our curvature combs, which represent the radius of curvature. Now, if we go the next level up, we can select these two and set an equal curvature relation, not to be confused with equal length curve, which is a completely different thing. And uh, the equal curvature relation will try to force these to be equal radius of curvature right there. So depending on how I manipulate it though, you can see that the transition in the curvature combs may not be ideal. So they technically are gonna be equal curvature there. I can do that on each end. It may not be a great transition in curvature uh, between there. Now we can manually manipulate a spline to approach what we'd call a G3 connection. So we also refer to tangent as G1 curvature continuous as G2, and uh, G3 is what SOLIDWORKS is calling torsion continuity, where the rate of change of the curvature is nice and smooth. So we can manually try to achieve that, and that's what we used to have to do in years past in SOLIDWORKS if we wanted to achieve that level of quality. Uh, but for 2020 and newer versions, you can basically apply that directly as a torsion continuity relation. And so I can do that on both ends here. And we'll see how nice and smooth that looks. Now, this is controlling a lot of the spline. It's locking up a lot of the degrees of freedom. So if you try to manipulate these things, it may behave a little bit weird on you, not different than you, than you expect. And generally, you'll probably need more freedom in the spline than you than you would with just curvature continuity. So that could mean adding another spline point or more control points into your style spline. So let's look at that with the style spline here, which is the alternate spline definition that's generally quite a bit smoother. Uh, inside SOLIDWORKS, it uses a BZA curve under the hood. Uh, and I'm gonna place, you can see I can automatically grab tangent if I place it in the right spot and automatically grab curvature. And I wanna have at least um, six points total in this thing. Something to point out here is that tangent on a style spline will control the first leg of the control polygon. Uh, if you think of curvature continuity, that's gonna control the first two legs right here. So meaning I can't uh, really change the angle of this leg. Some people I see are under the false impression that if we set these like collinear, that'll achieve the same thing. But you can see it actually needs to be at a slightly different angle here to achieve the uh, curvature continuity. If we were to if we were to remove the curvature for a second, and I just set these to be collinear that's actually the same as the curvature going to zero. So that works in the special case of if you're going into a flat line or something with zero curvature. Uh, but we need to realize that if we're relying on these relations, like a curvature relation equal curvature, then we need to allow some freedom in the first two legs of the control polygon. And it's gonna be the same thing with the torsion relation. It's gonna be the first three legs of the control polygon. So now these first three are essentially being controlled by the relation. And so really you'd want to have three for each side if you're trying to do G3 on both sides. So that's how I came up with the six points. 
Um, otherwise, it's very likely if I don't have enough points there, let's say I, I reduce the curve degree, and then I try to do G3 on both sides, it may just go over defined. Okay, five was enough apparently here. Uh, let's try four. And now eventually it goes over defined. There's just not enough freedom in the spline to apply that G3 relation. As soon as we raise the curve degree, all of a sudden then it's able to solve. Okay, and again, manipulating these is gonna be weird uh, because they're being controlled to maintain these relations. I generally find it's easiest to manipulate by the first, uh, kind of starting with the first control point and then working your way outward from there. So we can see we can really ease ease the shape easily by controlling these first couple control points and then maybe make fine adjustments with the uh, third or fourth one. But you can see if you, if you move too far, it's easy for things to get out of control. So we'll look at a, um, a way to control that a lot better in just a minute here on kind of a more practical example. All right, so for the second example, we wanna produce a, what I'm calling a diving surface or a surface that just fades out into the surrounding surface. And we can see that was done with a um, few features here. And what we'll be producing here is this nice blend between the two different surfaces. And we'll do that by taking advantage of these uh, G3 connections on the splines. So on this file, you can see that I have one profile created and it's using the style spline and it's using a G3 relation into an intersection curve there. Uh, so we'll talk about that in a second. There's more profiles I wanna create on additional planes so I can really control the shape of this as we work our way around the bend. So I'll be creating a style spline and I'm going to put those three legs roughly in position and then one going up to the top. I like to draw the style spline separately and then pierce to the edges to really make sure that I'm uh, safe there. And you may know of this hidden relation where you can click the spline, hold control and select the edge, and then a face, and you can do a tangency or curvature to face, which is a really you know useful relation. Um, unfortunately, the G3 isn't available here. So this does provide equal curvature, but if you wanna take it that next level up, we need some type of a curve to blend into. So that could be an intersection curve, face curve, projected curve, split line, anything like that. I'm gonna use an intersection curve, which I can access under the convert entities pull down and intersect against this face. And then what I'll do is I'll switch that to be for construction. And I'll take my spline and that new curve and go G3. Now, I mentioned manipulating these a little bit more easily and it really depends on the geometry, but you can look at the geometry of the style spline and figure out if there's a, a geometry, figure out if there's a geometrical way you can control it. Here I can see that these three legs, the way I drew them, look roughly equal. So if I take the first three legs of the style spline and just set them to be equal size, they can still be whatever angle they wanna be, but this makes it really easy for them to be repositioned. Now it adjusts very naturally like I would expect. Um, so that's a really handy trick a lot of the time, not in every circumstance, but a lot of times you can equate a couple legs of the style spline. And then this last remaining uh, degree of freedom, I'll control with a angle dimension. And I'll basically wanna repeat this process for a couple more Instead of starting from scratch each time, uh, the next plane I want to go to, I can just take this sketch, select the whole sketch, and Control C to copy on the keyboard, and Control V to paste it onto that new plane. And then we can see, you know, how it needs to be reoriented and resized a little bit. Um, so this intersection curve is incorrect now. I'd want to delete that. 
and I'd want to you know pierce once again the different ends even this one it looks like it's there but I want to make sure it's pierced and it's always a good habit to get these things kind of roughly into position before you um, before you go applying the constraints so just kind of help it out a little bit lift lift everything up a little bit then I'll do the intersection curve and then apply the G3 relation. And make sure I flip this one for construction so it doesn't cause any problems. And we just copy that also onto the last plane. So it's nice copying each entire sketch and pasting it. You get a different behavior if you copy from within the sketch. It doesn't copy all your relations and everything typically. So. Um, when you're not in edit sketch mode, copying the entire sketch and pasting it, and then you can see how much your profile is actually changing as you go through each um, each adjustment. This one's going to need a little more wrangling to get it into the shape it wants to be here. And then one last G3 relation. Okay, and of course we can use the curvature combs like we did on this first profile to see how smooth everything is. But with that G3 relation, I'm very confident it'll be a really smooth transition. Okay, so now I want to create my surface that's going to blend these together. And for me, that's going to be a boundary surface. And I'm just going to select these in order. And then in my direction to field, I'll right click to load the selection manager. And that'll let me select these separate curves I have here and load them in as one selection. One of the handy things about the boundary surface is it lets me automatically trim. So I can trim by direction one to make sure I'm just getting half of this model. And then uh, I think it's worth pointing out, I have things like the mesh preview on so I can see how the UV lines of the surface kind of flow along uh, the curves. And, um, you know, the splines we have set right now are forcing a G3 condition wherever those curves are. But then in between, we need to still set some conditions. And that's what we set by edge here. So um, I choose my inner edge, and that's the one I want to be curvature continuous. So I'd come down here and set curvature to face. I can increase the magnitude of that. Uh, same thing for the other edge where it blends into the surrounding surface. I want that to be curvature to face. And my initial sketch, since it is a my, my first profile, since it's on the mirror plane, I would want to set that to be normal to that plane. Normal to profile will make sure that when I mirror it, I won't see any kind of seam line there. So even though we don't have the G3 setting, uh, torsion continuity in the boundary surface or any of our surface types, using the underlying G3 splines is going to give us a very close to G3 result. Uh, so it's very worth taking advantage of these new spline relations if, if you're worried about surface quality, because it's just gonna, it makes it so much easier for these surfaces to generate when you have nice smooth quality curves underneath them. So here we can see the surface that was created and we can mirror it. And then I'll take a look at the resulting quality. So I'm going to mirror about the right plane and then knit. And so here we can see the shape that resulted. And we can look at things like our curvature plot and our zebra stripes. And if we look at them from kind of a straight on view, we can see we have a really nice connection between these different surfaces. So again, surface quality in SOLIDWORKS is totally dependent on the quality of your initial curves and the very first surfaces you're creating. So having this ability to produce G3 curves now uh, is a big step up in SOLIDWORKS 2020 and newer versions. And I think it'll just help prevent a lot of downstream issues 
uh, with trying to maintain curvature continuity once you've built up you know, surfaces that are derived from other surfaces and so on.